What is masculinity? And what does it mean to be masculine? Is it continuous displays of bravado? Or being so manly that no one would ever question your sexuality? Neither of these are true for me. By nature, I am not the most outspoken. And as a man, there have been times in my past where I've questioned my own sexuality, which has undoubtedly challenged my faith. Throughout the majority of my school years, I was labeled a faggot. I was 13 years old. I hated the way I walked. I hated the way I talked. I hated everything about myself. I grew up quite an effeminate kid, and I learned very early on that being truly myself was not acceptable. I felt misunderstood, judged, and insignificant. For a large part of my life, I've had trouble identifying with the male community. Growing up, I knew I was male, and I wanted to be male, but it seemed that people deemed me unfit to carry that title. I began to withdraw from others. I became isolated from a lack of community, freedom, and authentic self-expression. And from there, feelings of depression, suicidal thoughts, and self-hate began to be birthed. As I got older and made the transition from high school to university, I began filling the various voids in my life with drugs. And unbeknown to me at the time, that would be the beginning of my five-year battle with substance abuse. I fell in love with drugs and the way they made me feel. I was insecure. They gave me confidence. I felt trapped. They gave me freedom. Over the five years, in addition to drugs, I continually tried to replenish the unfulfilled areas of my life with things that would never possess the ability to ever truly fill them. I began to realize that I wasn't young and free. I was running from myself and my problems and becoming trapped in the grasp of drugs in the process. Suicide is the number one leading cause of death for men under 50 in the UK. In 2013, a total of 6,233 suicides in people aged 15 and older were registered in the UK. Of the total number of suicides, 78% of them were male. 4,800 and 58 of our nation's men ended their own life. Beyond Blue, which is an Australian-based organization that endeavors to protect all people's mental health, conducted research that helps identify men who may be at risk of suicide. The project was based on face-to-face -face interviews and online surveys of over 200 men across Australia who had recently attempted suicide. Amongst other things, the research found that the four common elements among suicidal men are stoic beliefs about masculinity, depression, isolation, and coping mechanisms that are used to avoid the relevant issues. Based on this research, it's evident that men's relationship with authentic self-expression and masculinity seems to be in an ever-present state of perplexity. Milk for Tea is a platform that brings men together to speak about issues that matter while doing things we're interested in. The company was birthed out of the loneliness and hurt I felt from not being able to speak openly about the issues I've struggled with. It's an invitation to embark on a journey not based in male perfection, but in individual and collective progression. Culture is constantly changing. We live in a society that is advanced by its people. It seems that each generation is given their own set of challenges. The issues that provoke each modern era to jump faster and farther than the one before. One thing that's previously helped induce change and challenge the status quo has been the continual cycle of social movements. In the 60s, a decade that saw a plethora of change, you had everything from feminists to the brave youth of the sit-ins that propelled the women's liberation and African-American civil rights movement alike both of which had powerful and lasting culture-changing effects. The sociology department at the University of California in Santa Barbara says that social movements are one of the principal social forms through which groups of people give voice to concerns about the rights, welfare, and well-being of themselves and others by engaging in different forms of collective action. 
I believe the modern gentleman is this generation's hope for change. The men in modern day have a profound opportunity to help progress our community of brothers all around the world. Though it's not all bad, the man in 2015 appears to still be dusting himself off from a hard fall from grace in today's society. And this is why the call for the modern gentleman is so important. As a community of men, we seem to be failing to recognize our self-worth. And that has caused a rampage of issues. Many of these issues have had an adverse effect on how we view and treat women. In my opinion, as men, we should be continually uplifting women and working alongside of them to speak out against and combat prevalent issues such as domestic abuse and sexual human trafficking. These are two instances where women are the main victims and men are the main offenders. Yet, for the most part, women seem to be spearheading the fight against these causes. And I don't believe that's okay. Equality Now, which is a global organization that works for the protection and promotion of women and girls, reports that 98% of the people who are trafficked for, exploitation, for sexual exploitation are female. Does this show us that there is an underlying issue with how men view and conduct themselves? The reality is that times have changed, and the idea of the emotionalist predator of a man is outdated and extremely detrimental to men's well-being. For quite some time now, the world has viewed masculinity as a distorted notion that mainstream society seems to continually support. These are the attributes and portrayals of men through music, TV, film, and the media that endorse the idea that all real men are ripped with a six-pack, boisterous, sleep with an abundance of women, and even degrade them. These characteristics and ideologies of what it means to be a real man don't come anywhere close to speaking the truth about the value of men. Charles R. Swindle, author of the critically acclaimed book Man to Man, says that true manhood calls for discipline of character, strong determination to set a course of action, and courage to stay at task. At Milk for Tea, I aim to reach out to inspirational and influential people who men are already looking up to. I believe those who currently have the attention of men are key people to help induce positive cultural change within the male community. I was fortunate enough to interview Nick Hart of Spencer Hart earlier this year for our website. Nick Hart is the founder and designer of the menswear tailoring brand Spencer Hart, a label that has been worn by the likes of Prince William, Kanye, Jay-Z, Benedict Cumberbatch, and Daniel Craig, just to name a select few of the many who admire his brand. The conversation I had with Nick was one of inspiration, insight, and candor. Along with telling me an enviable story of him dancing with Naomi Campbell at a Golden Globes after party in LA, he also shared with me the challenges he's faced as an individual, the times where he struggled with addiction and felt alone. It's this balanced story of an influential person that has the ability to help change lives. It's this balanced story of an influential person that so many young men, especially young men like me, can relate to. Interviewing and shedding light on the diverse aspects of inspiring individuals is just one of the ways that we're looking to encourage men to live in excellence. Another is by putting on an array of events that aim to bring like-minded people together. Earlier this year, we had our first whiskey tasting here in Bristol. At events like these, we're able to incorporate the various aspects of the modern gentleman, including lifestyle, culture, food, drink, style, and fashion, along with inspiration and thought-provoking conversation. One of my biggest inspirations for wanting to help make a difference in my life and others is undoubtedly Arthur Ashe. It's the 9th of September, 1968, in Forest Hills, New York. Less than five months after America's top civil rights leader, Martin Luther King Jr., had been assassinated. The black community was distraught. Everything they had worked for, all the progress that had been made, seemed to have been ripped from their grasp. Then on steps the center court, a tall, slim, young black man in beautiful clothes, playing in a predominantly white sport, but had the opportunity to do what had never been done before. 
Arthur Ashe knew what was going on. He knew that black men and women were being terrorized because of the color of their skin. That young boys and girls who looked just like him were being hanged to death for sport. And that pol the police were setting dogs loose and beating those who stood for the equality of all people. Yet on that day, all he could do was be the best that he could possibly be and do it all with excellence and grace. After the last set of the match had been played, Arthur Ashe stood proud as the first and still only black man to ever win the US Open or any Grand Slam title and served as a beacon of hope in a sea of darkness. This is a prime example of how even just one person can help to heal and unite a nation. Alongside Milk for Tea, I'm also an official ambassador for the UK organization, The Calm Zone, which is a registered charity that exists to prevent male suicide. I work to bridge the gap between our viewership and the qualified work of those at The Calm Zone to bring awareness to the help that has been created to serve those dealing with depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts. Apart from aiming to be the leading platform for introducing and promoting the modern gentleman, I hope that we will be a maverick in initiating vital conversations that aren't being had and speaking more in depth on ones that may already be going on. Through the launch of our video content, I want to give voice to issues that affect people globally. In the times we live in, it seems increasingly important that we don't just learn to survive, but that we genuinely encourage each other to thrive and be the change that we'd like to see in this city, country, and ultimately the world. The modern gentleman has an opportunity to progress and sophisticate the identity of the modern man. The great thing about the modern gentleman that differs from some of the previous social movements is that there is no one face for it, there's no particular music, and in all honesty, no mandatory dress code. The modern gentleman is entirely inclusive. It's an ideology that welcomes diversity and honors individuality, while simultaneously challenging us to become better versions of ourselves. May we all learn to live in the fullness of the potential that we already possess. Thank you all so much for listening. God bless you.